an out and about video today in Estepona. Here we are. So I've managed to get out from behind my desk, get a bit of exercise and come and do an appointment here today. And so what have we been doing today? Today we've been registering some EU family members children. Okay, so the parents have already got residency. Uh, the father was British and the mother, uh, sorry, the father was Irish, the mother was British. Uh, we had their residencies and we just finalised the children, so here in Estepona. Um, great police station if you come here they're really nice if you can get appointments here generally there's never any queue they've got somebody somebody at the door who's normally pretty pretty good in letting you in on time we had our appointments at quarter past 11 and we're out now and it's quarter to 12 so you know that's good they're very strict with the paperwork here though you're not going to get anything fly here I can tell you if you forget anything then they're not going to do the job uh, but not going to do their job they're not going to let you complete whatever you need to complete other places like Malaga at times they can be a little bit more flexible um, but here definitely there's no flexibility at all uh, here in every experience that we've had um, but it's great three little desks Estepona if you live in this way uh, to the far uh, west of Malaga great police station to come to I'm going to put a link underneath here uh, to how to get here and a bit more information about it and what I wanted to actually is just show you about so if you see now if you see here when you drive in you'll see a slip road off to your right now I suggest if you're looking for parking that you take this slip road off to your right and it brings you into a, quite an urban area and I always find parking here you can either dive immediately off to the left or you can carry on up the hill and there's always parking um, if you drive off to the left you'll see here behind me where is that motorbike going to go up there? Yes, it is. There we go. Then there's loads of parking up there. You just might, have, might need to have a little bit of a walk down the hill. Lovely little bar next door. There you go. That's where you can do your business afterwards because all, uh, all business is done in bars in Spain, isn't it? I'm joking. We have an office. And uh, just to show you here up the hill, so if you are at the police station and they ask you for the obligatory copies that you didn't bring, even though you bring bringing copies of everything, you know, you've got the copy place at the hill there. So that's it, that's Estepona police station. Uh, we're talking, talking to the lady behind the, uh, behind the counter today doing the job. And she was uh, brought up a few things because I, I asked why she didn't need the, uh, the uh, birth certificates because quite often when it's registering a child, albeit that the birth certificates have been presented either at the consulate or if there are EU family members here at immigration, at the subdelegación de gobierno, as they call it, um, we always say bring the certificates anyway because sometimes they ask, sometimes they don't. And I asked her why do sometimes they ask and sometimes they don't. They said, look, we don't know why this happens, but sometimes when we jump on the system, okay, you can't see who the child depends on. They haven't registered who the child depends on. All right, so the residency's been approved. The residency's been approved on a basis of a dependency, but... Whoever did the approval didn't put down the name of the person they depend on. In those cases, you have to present a birth certificate. So for us today, we didn't have to because immigration or subdelegación de gobierno had registered the children to the, uh, the parents or uh, the, the father, the padre, already. And um, because it was registered to the father, we didn't need to prove who they were dependent on. Okay, that's basically it. Um, but sometimes, um, albeit that they approve these residency, these residencies, they don't actually write in the system who they depend on. Now they said 99.9% .9 of the time in the subdelegación de gobierno residencies which are done from within Spain, so whether that be either the immigration or sometimes as well with um, what they call the golden visa, the unidades de grandes empresas, different section. Most of the ones which are done in Spain, third country nationals who qualify to make their application in Spain because they're members of an EU family, uh, normally that happens, that it's already registered, you don't have to bring the certificate. I would advise you bring it anyway, but normally you don't have to. For people who have got their residencies through a consulate, so maybe you're a non lucrative visa family and you've got kids who are under 18 and they're coming under you, they say generally we have problem with these. <laughs> they're always, when it's been done in a consulate, it comes and it's missing details. And this is why you need things like padron certificates if the address isn't correct, or the consulate hasn't re registered the address correctly, or you know, birth certificates and stuff like that. So it's an interesting point that we got there from them today. Um, so yeah, that's it. We're going to have a wander up the road now and go off to the town hall. So 
So we're on our, on our way now from the Estrangeria to Town Hall to go and do a quick Padron appointment actually uh, with some of our clients. Just going to get a duplicate, pick it up from them and we're registering their S1. I just thought I'd do a quick video here. How gorgeous is it today? Hey, look at this. So there you can see the police pound. That's why that, that's why that truck's gone down there because the police pound is actually in that car park. So if you ever get your car towed off, you know where to come. And um, and look at it, what a beautiful day out and about here in, uh, in Estepona. It's got to be, my car's marking uh, 18 degrees today. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. Now we're going to go back round the roundabout because the road I was going to go down has been cut off. So you can imagine how long it's been since I've actually been here. Didn't know that, but never mind. Gives a chance to see Esther Ponner. Eighteen degrees, January the thirteenth. And you wonder why people want NLVs. And here we go, past the police pound, which is also the underground car park here. Espon is great, it's got a great um, urban centre, a bit of an old town, um, big mixture of nationalities, but you can still find really good restaurants if you, well, say, but you can, but you can find really good restaurants if you want to find really good restaurants, or you've got your typical Spanish reasonable restaurants um, if you just want to go for something local. Um, obviously, here in Estepona, you're only a hop, skip, and a jump away from Gibraltar. Um, also, Cadiz is on your doorstep, places like Tarifa, where you can then, where you get a bit of Atlantic Ocean. So, if you're a bit bored of the Med, you can uh, jump down to the Atlantic. I, yeah, I suggest, you know, summer's great there, but you know, do some winter trips if you ever move over. Winter down in Cadiz is brilliant. You can get some great deals on hotels, the beaches are clear, you still get the days which are 20 degrees, and um, yeah. If you're a nudist, there's plenty of nudist beaches down there. Even if you're not a nudist, then you can always go and have a go, can't you? There's plenty of nudist beaches down there. Uh, the food is amazing. Uh, a lot of tuna down there. So you go to the town called Barbati. Barbati is absolutely phenomenal for tuna. Uh, it's amazing. Go and see the Roman ruins. Only an hour away from here in Bologna. So there's Roman ruins in Bologna. That's, uh, it's great. It's free to get in as well. Ran by the Hunt Andalusia. Uh, that's uh, well worth a trip. Um, and obviously, Estepona is only an hour away from, well, even less from Malaga Airport. So, for people to get to you and see you, it's great. Anyway, I'd better stop recording because I'm lost. So, I just wanted to do a quick video. So, the town hall is actually behind us here. As you're coming towards the, uh, the port, you'll see you go down this road to the right hand side where that car's coming in now, and that's the town hall there on your right hand side. I'm going to put some photos of the exact address on uh, this video, and I just wanted to show you where an easy place to park is. So, if we're crossing the road now, as you're coming from Malaga direction, you're going to see this roundabout here. Which also, if you go all the way around it, gives you access to the port in Estepona, the Puerto Deportivo. There you go. So when you get to this roundabout, a lot of people, what they do is they'll go around into the port automatically. There is parking down there, but you have to pay. Um, and it can be a little bit tough to get at times. And um, But if we take a... So if we're at this roundabout here, uh, there, and then you take... Right, you'll see this roundabout here with a little boat on it. Let's just go past this roundabout here with a boat. Obviously, as I'm recording these in selfie mode, I think the video might be in reverse, but you know what I mean. So, you'll see this boat here, and then up that road there where that car's just gone, there's plenty of parking there. I always find parking there, always, always. And it's literally is a two minute trot from the town hall to that parking there. So, remember the parking up the hill. You've got the boat, 
and you've got the Deportivo roundabout. That's it really. All right, well that's us done for today in Estepona. Get the road back to Malaga.